come on guys what is this so this morning i got the call saying that these steers had pushed this gate over i'm not really sure why they did that the only thing that i'm thinking is maybe they were standing underneath this tree to get some shade and you know one thing leads to another and they ended up pushing on it a little bit it's actually not that surprising because this gate hinge was kind of messed up and i think hay twine was most of what was holding it on there so today we're going to get this fixed and then when i get done with this job my plan is to go down to the hay field and get the fire brake pulled and as always whatever else comes up that's what's going on today on farmer tyler ranch So you can kind of see what happened here. The, uh, the way that these hinges were fastened to the gate, they just had holes drilled through here and some bolts and the bolts are broken now and missing. And I knew that this was the issue. They used like maybe quarter inch bolts, bolts that I, I think were too small, obviously because they broke. So I've got some three eighths bolts that we're gonna use here instead. And hopefully those will stand up to a little bit more punishment. And I think this is gonna be a lot easier if I lay that down so I can push the drill down instead of pushing it out. Mm. bottom hinge is on so now the trick in doing this by myself is I got to figure out a way to lift this gate up and hold it in place while I install the top hinge and I think I can just use this chain to sort of tie this up or try to find some blocks or something to put under it. Well, look what I have. This job just got a lot easier. Oh yeah, looky there. That is not very straight, holy smokes. Make it work, I guess. Well, whoever made this original hole, they didn't do it very straight, which is fine, but now when I'm drilling my new bigger hole, I pretty much have to follow what they've got here already. So, well, it is what it is. Just gotta play the hand you're dealt sometimes. Well, the gate works. I don't honestly love that hinge, but it's it's fine. I think that, yeah, I think that they were hanging out in here under the, in the shade because you can see how the ground is all tore up right here. And there's really no reason that they would wanna be here other than to be in the shade. So maybe they got to fighting or pushing or, or who knows what and just pop that twine. I don't think they were actively trying to get in here because They've got a mountain of uh, feed in this middle pasture where they were at still. But this is the pasture that I was gonna move them into uh, tomorrow. So now I don't have to worry about doing that. Assuming that they're all in here. I can see them down there eating. So we might have to walk down there and count them just to be sure. But 
what I definitely need to do is get the water set up in this new field because right now there's no water out there. They were fine while they were in there because they would have been able to walk back in here and get to this water trough, but I'm gonna lock them in this field now, so we gotta make sure that they got water. And I remembered one of the two things I've been trying to remember to bring here, that is pruning shears. So let's go ahead and clean up these berry vines a little bit before we set this water up. Well, that's a little better on this side. Let's go ahead and do the other side while we're here. That's definitely better, but probably won't take but a couple weeks for all this to grow back. I think the berry vines are found all over the world, all over the country, I'm not really sure. If you're not familiar with berry vines and if you're wondering why I'm going through so much effort to remove them, it's because it's basically like nature's barbed wire. These things are covered in thorns and every time I gotta move this float from trough to trough, I stab myself and it's not fun. And there's something about berry vine thorns that seem to hurt extra. Like if you cut yourself on a piece of barbed wire or something like that, it hurts, but berry vine cuts, they hurt in a different way. Well, they're not going to be hungry out here, that's for sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everybody's here. Hey, I got some Redmond salt for you if you want it. Everybody's here. They look fine. We just checked on them the other day, but I did want to make sure that all seven of them made it into this new field. So we'll go drop off the Redmond blocks. They'll find them. Um, and yeah, then we can move on to the next thing. The key with these salt blocks over here is getting them where a sprinkler won't hit them because if you've constantly got a sprinkler shower raining down on these things, they melt away and disappear a lot faster than they should. Well, it's been a while since we pulled the chisel out of the shop here. As you can tell by the trees growing up in it, I think I better hit those with the brush hog before they get any bigger. Nevertheless, I think this is gonna be the best choice for our fire break because it's a lot wider than the disc and the edge of the field has got a lot of weed pressure. I went around and mowed all that the other day, but there's still a lot of that um, like leftover chopped off weeds on the ground and the chisel will help incorporate that a little bit better than the disc would, I think. But before we go jamming down the road, I wanna put some air in these tires, put some grease in the pivot points on the hinge here and just give it a once over, make sure everything's good and then we should be ready to go. If memory serves, I think this hydraulic cylinder needs to be rebuilt. Obviously, we're not going to do that today. The only trouble with it is that it kind of settles as you're going. I've got these ram stops on here to take care of that, but um, I think it leaks too. It, it seems like it probably does. And, you know, for those two reasons, it ought to be rebuilt which means I'm gonna have a lot of hydraulic cylinders that need to be rebuilt really starting any time. There's two on the baler that are bad, and then this one makes three. So I'm gonna get a lot of practice here coming up. Well, there's not really a whole lot that needs to be done to this thing. I think it's ready to go. So let's uh, see if we can't squeeze through the gate. If memory serves, it doesn't quite fit, but I can sort of slide it through. I don't know what's going on, but it does not seem possible for this to fit. I 
feel like in the past I was just able to like wiggle it through somehow, but it's not happening today. So I think the easier way to do that is to just take this little wing off. It's only two bolts holding it on there. Take that off and I think we can fit pretty easily then. Not sure why I didn't do that before. There it is. Okay. Look at that. Nothing to it. That ought to stay on. Now I made a mistake here. I went off and I left my blocks. This jack won't touch the ground without them. So I think there's some, some junk around here I can find to use instead. Ooh, bingo. I think that'll work right there. We're getting just about done here. I'm doing three passes around the entire field. And I think that chisel's like 12 feet wide or something like that. Um, but down here along the levee and then over where the houses are at, I'm gonna do like four extra passes or something like that, I mean, two extra, whatever. And the reason for that is that in the past when we did have a fire, it came from on the levee over here. So I feel like the highest potential for a uh, fire source would be the levee or the road or possibly this transformer here on this tower. So I do a little bit of extra fire break in these areas just to give myself a little bit of extra insurance. The chisel does a pretty good job of working this up. This ground's already pretty hard. Although there are some areas that still have a surprising amount of moisture in them. The only downside to it is that it, it leaves a lot of clods behind. The disc in the roller would not be leaving clods like this. It would be a lot smoother. But the reason that I went with the chisel on this particular job is just because it's wider, it gets a little bit deeper, and it's better at covering grass, like where I had to mow grass on the edges. Or thistles, in this case, you can see these thistles are monsters over here. And even after mowing all of this plant matter and coming over it with the chisel, you can see, yeah, there is still some plant on the ground, but the chisel has brought a lot of dirt up to cover that as well. So I got my extra insurance passes done here along the levee. I'd say this fire break is, boy, 60 feet maybe. Let's go do a few more insurance passes up by the houses and then we'll be done.
Last thing I gotta do today, move these cows. I think that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.